Good morning, beautiful people. I'm bringing this to you from a really remote, funny-looking place in the middle of Bali. In the, it's like an oasis in the middle of the paddy fields. But we have a new moon in Virgo on uh, the 3rd of September in Australian time. <clears throat> and I wanted to share with you some of the uh, views I have about what we can do with a new moon in Virgo and how you might be able to use that energy constructively for yourself. So this new moon occurs on the 3rd of September, just before noon, Brisbane time. So do check for your local time. We're also going to look at some significant movements of the outer planets, which really affect all of us. And um, just a little reminder, there's a lunar eclipse at the full moon in Virgo in the middle of the month. So this new moon seems for me to have come around really quickly. The new moon in Virgo occurs on Wednesday the 3rd, as I said, just before noon Brisbane time. So do adjust for your time zone. And it's not just the new moon that we have to consider this time, but it's also the movement of major outer planets which really affect us all at some level. Pluto has just slipped back into Capricorn, 29 degrees, having been retrograde in Aquarius since the beginning of May. Pluto will be in Capricorn until November the 20th when he moves back into Aquarius for 20 years. Wow. Uranus stations retrograde in Taurus on the 2nd of September, which will be Monday at 27 degrees, and he's moving very slowly back for several months to 23 in January, 23 degrees in January 2025. And then it go forward again. So if this Uranus is... Um, impacting you in fixed degrees so Aquarius, Leo, Scorpio or Taurus you might might find that there's some interesting things occurring for you if you have a birthday that is in the late degrees of any of those fixed signs. Neptune is retrograde in Pisces at 29 degrees making a lovely sextile combination with Pluto and with Uranus. So great Evelyn what the hell does all this mean? Well, let's deal first with the new moon in Virgo, ruled by Mercury and tradi traditionally associated with the sixth house in a chart, which is concerned with daily habits and health. We all have Virgo in our chart somewhere, and we can use this energy wisely and focus on matters like our health and well-being, changing our daily habits, clearing out what no longer serves us, tidying up our belongings or personal affairs. And the new moon is always a good time to set new intentions. And so for me, this is a really good time to reset my daily routine by participating in a yoga retreat and refreshing my skill set and maybe my mental outlook. Who knows? It starts today, Sunday. I'm recording this on Sunday, the 1st of September. Now, as the sun moves through our energy fields via our astrological charts, we get to move our focus every month and attend to a different aspect of our lives. Perhaps this time last year, you wanted to change your job or adjust your diet or establish a new exercise regime. And not all of those intentions worked out well. Well, here you go. Let's try again. Adjusting for the aspirations which may have been too, may have been too ambitious last time or other lessons we may have learned. You will be building on your experience. Life is not a linear progression, but rather a spiral. And as we make progress, we move up the spiral. Nothing's lost. So what dietary changes do you want to make? More fruit and veggies? Less or no meat? More fresh fruit and veggies and less pre-prepared food? Listen carefully to what Robert F. Kennedy has to say about what is being consumed by Americans that some call food. Does this apply to you? Check the notes in the end. For us in the Southern Hemisphere, as we move into summer, it's a good time to start a new physical exercise program. And that might mean enrolling in a gym membership, a yoga class, Pilates class, swimming training, bike training, and so on. But going regularly, no use starting it and just stop. It may mean it may mean walking more frequently or for longer. 
It may mean adjusting your daily routine to attending to this exercise first thing in the morning so it assumes more importance in your day and does not get left to the last as if when you're tired or have run out of hours in the day. Whatever. The energy is there now to support these adjustments in your daily routine. So just as you adjust your daily routine with your diet or your exercise, consider taking it in small steps, changing only a few activities at a time. As your routine adjusts and settles, you can introduce more change, again slowly, so it becomes a real daily routine and not just a dream. Now, all our cupboards start out clean and tidy. Well, they usually do at my house. But with daily life, things get out of place and untidy and stuff becomes redundant or no longer useful and so on. And this is a great time to review our wardrobe, the linen cupboard, the pantry, the bathroom cabinet. How many old bits of makeup, potions and pills are out of are stale or out of date or no longer used? Throw them out. <clears throat> Remember also that our computer files need attention from time to time and can benefit from review and reorganisation. Do we need records of correspondence or messages that are more than a few years old? How many old photographs do you really need to keep? Consider creating a printed book that is easier to peruse than images on a computer. And there are many great platforms and apps that can help. I use a, a platform called Blurb, which I, um, I make photograph books for my own purpose, but I also use Blurb to make those beautiful baby books I make for people who have newborns. Check it out. But, you know, adverse energy, adverse Virgo energy can show up in our digestive systems and solar plexus areas. And while we often link and try and link these symptoms to what we've eaten, consider what anxiety can also cause. You know, anxiety can cause these sorts of symptoms because our physical body contracts and feels tight. And our physical body will man manifest what is out of alignment in our minds and our feelings. And this is particularly strong in Virgo energy. You know, Virgos do tend to be worry wards. So worry about what things, stuff, things, stuff that doesn't ever happen. And if this is your situation... Consider what you might be anxious about. Can you change the situation? If not, let the issue go, knowing that your power is in your response. Sometimes, you know, it's just a simply a change in attitude. And from a yogic perspective, it's wise to focus on the now. We can't change what has already happened, but we can change our response. We don't know what will happen in the future. So how does being anxious about what's something that may never occur help you? Let go and let God. Easier said than done. I know. Lise Borbeau has a fine book on metaphysics, which can be very helpful. It's called Love Yourself. She explains how physical symptoms in the body can be indicators of deeper emotional or psychological issues. And when we resolve the non-physical issues, often the physical symptoms recede or even disappear. For example, many folk have lower back issues, which indicates that the person is feeling unsupported by the universe. And often this occurs at a time when we're changing jobs or without work or for some reason feel insecure about our financial situation. And when the financial issue resolves, the lower back issues also recede. Food for thought, eh? Molly McCord, I'll put the reference below as well, reminds us that around the middle of the month, there is a minor grand trine between Pluto, Uranus and Neptune. And grand trines are harmonious energies signaling the end of a significant period of our lives in this particular case, where we can be aware of what we have learned and some of the soul lessons that we wanted to experience. Taurus, Uranus in Taurus, Earth sign, is urging us to let go of habits 
bonds that have kept us in this place and open us open ourselves to new experiences. Pluto in Capricorn, also an Earth sign, signals to successful completion of the Pluto transformation in whatever sector of our chart he has been transiting since 2008. Think about that for a moment. What changes have you really experienced? Neptune in Pisces, a very ethereal water sign, is softening all these experiences for us and indicating that as humanity, we are ending a particular aspect of our spiritual growth. The North Node moving over that same degree in January emphasizes the shift for humanity. So that's January 2025. So we've got that to look forward to. Just uh, So the planetary energies really uh, cement what energies they've been putting out previously. So do take time to reflect on what has had changed for you in the last five years. What do you really need to retain? Are there people with whom you no longer need to connect as your energy fields have changed? You know, if you're mixing with people who don't help you feel good about yourself, do you need to keep those connections? You don't have to be rude. You just have to recede from the connection. And so how much can you let go so that new and more exciting things can come into your, your life? A full moon lunar eclipse occurs on the 18th of September around noon. That's local time here. So do adjust for your time wherever you are at around 25 degrees Pisces Virgo. The moon is close to Neptune in Pisces. What will be shown in the light or come out in the open at the time of the eclipse for you? Neptune is about your dreams and aspirations. Will they become clearer at this time? This is also emotional energy. So be sure to connect to how you feel. Another opportunity to adjust to changing conditions. A solar eclipse will follow with a new moon in Libra. And I will comment about that in the next edition of these little videos. I mentioned before that Pluto has just crept back into Capricorn. And this is the energy of top-down control, where those who would be in positions of power and influence seek to impose their will. With that in mind, I found it interesting that I was preparing, as I was preparing to tra travel to Bali, Friday, I had a notification that the Indonesian government requires travellers to complete a declaration about monkeypox. Really? For me, does it exist? Is it really a threat? Is it an attempt at top-down control and an imposition of fear? What do you think? Uranus is showing his influence in the US election as there has been a sudden or there have been sudden and unexpected changes in the candidates presenting for president. What other changes may occur? Will there be an election at all? There is so much impacting the USA, but this is not the time to review that. If you listen to Pam Gregory, you, Gregory, uh, you may find some information on that. As I mentioned before, people with significant planets in the later degrees of the fixed signs, Aquarius, Taurus, Leo and Scorpio, they will feel the Uranus energy in the next six or eight months. Something will shift for you over the next few months. Fixed energy does not enjoy change, so you may feel uncomfortable. But I encourage you to embrace the changes and try and see the gifts in the new energy. Uranus is here to help you clear away what no longer serves you. And it's also assisting you in creating something new and exciting for the future. We have much more influence on our futures than we've been led to believe. You know, stuff can happen to you, but it's how you respond that makes a difference. Little story about Mercury retrograde over the last few weeks, just to finish off. 
communication is often poor in these periods. I think Mercury, Mercury retrograde finishes today or tomorrow. This is exactly what I experienced. My grandson had a birthday and his request was for red Crocs. For those who don't know, a style of plastic footwear. I searched online to locate a store with, his little, with little success. Phone calls revealed no red Crocs anywhere in his size. A couple of stores had really lovely customer services, really nice people I spoke to, and very helpful staff, but no Crocs. The website was, for me, as a customer and a user, was an absolute disaster. Contact was limited to a bot of some sort, which didn't really respond. I wanted to know where I might find what I was seeking and ask if there were plans for these shoes in the future, should there not be any at the moment. The website invited feedback, so I gave it to them. I sent two lots, suggesting that the comments of the messages would end up the comments in the messages would then end up in the bin. Even though I did supply contact for uh, contact details for response, I haven't had anything back. The impression I have is that they believe their products are so good that customer service is not required, and there's no need to respond to feedback. Allowing feedback gives some sort of customer satisfaction. So we'll give them the opportunity to send feedback, make them feel good. But it's actually, in this case, my opinion, it's Neptunian, ethereal. It doesn't exist. I've had no response. Shame on you, Crocs. By the way, we had a happy celebration of an eighth birthday. And I'm so grateful to have this beautiful family and these gorgeous little boys. Keep breathing, folk. This will allow you to communicate. Beg your pardon. This will allow you to more easily accommodate the changes that have been required, that are being required of you right now. And it may be best to go with the flow rather than force things to go in your way. I believe there is a higher power which supports us, no matter what we call that energy. Trust is easier said than done. Bye for now. Have a good Virgo season.